What is up, lovely people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our comparisons playlist. Today, we'll compare between Alport syndrome and Reiter syndrome. Reiter is the old name. Today, it's called reactive arthritis, one of the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. Woo, that was intense. So, in a nutshell, it's the nephritis versus the arthritis. Let's go. First, let's review Alport syndrome. By the way, a video on Alport syndrome is coming soon to my five minute review playlist. It's also coming to my nephrology playlist. Student doctor, please tell me, is Alport syndrome nephrotic or nephritic? Oh, it's nephritic. It's here. Remember the two A's, the IgA and the Alport. Both are nephritic. In other words, the kidney is shouting, ah, I'm inflamed. I'm bleeding. That's why you get blood in the urine. So, hey, Alport, are you nephrotic or nephritic? I am nephritic, which means are you the four features or the seven features? The seven features. What are the seven features? He, maturia, hypertension. O, ligoria, jugular venous distension. I'm swelling a bit. I have proteinuria a bit, but RFTs are going up a lot. Here is the essence of nephritic syndrome. Please pause and review. Alport syndrome. Remember boys. Why? Because it's mostly X-linked recessive, but it could be others. If it's X-linked, it's most commonly boys. If it's autosomal dominant, it's usually incomplete penetrance in this case. If it's autosomal recessive, think consanguinity, please. We have a genetic mutation in the collagen. Which collagen? Type 4. Where do you find type 4? Under the floor. What do you mean by the floor? The basement membrane. Oh, of the glomerulus? You bet. The glomerulus is injured. True. It is bleeding? Yeah and it's shedding tears of blood, hashtag hematuria. What else is to be found in Alport? Well, where else do you find collagen type 4? Uh, any basement membrane. Can this happen in the basement membrane here? Oh yeah, cataract. And other ocular features, as well as sensory neural hearing gloss. I can't hear, I can't see, there is blood in my pee. You can diagnose it clinically, and you do electromicroscopy for the glomerular basement membrane, and at the end of the day, you'll need genetic tests to confirm the actual mutation. And now let's jump on to the second topic, reactive arthritis. If it ends in itis, it means inflammation. We divide rheumatological disease into non-inflammatory, no systemic inflammation versus inflammatory. There is systemic inflammation because I know someone is going to say, oh, hey, my grandpa has osteo and the knee is inflamed. Yes, the knee is inflamed, but is this a systemic inflammation? Nope. And that's why I hate the name osteoarthritis, because it has itis in the end, even though it's non-inflammatory process for the most part. I would prefer to call it osteoarthropathy or degenerative joint disease. These are just the basics. The actual pathophysiology is way more complicated than this, but let's just keep it simple. How about inflammatory? Oh, everything that has itis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus arthritis, seronegative spondyloarthropathies, which include reactive arthritis, which is today's topic. Hey, Medicosis, what's the difference between a patient who has osteoarthritis versus a patient who has rheumatoid arthritis? Well, one is non-inflammatory, one is inflammatory. Why do I care? Because the non-inflammatory will not show the cardinal signs of inflammation, will have asymmetric involvement because it's mostly mechanical wear and tear. It's going to be worse in the evening because it's mechanical wear and tear. The more wear you have, the, the more pain. And CRP, ESR will be within normal limits. However, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, which is RA, inflammatory, what will you get? Cardinal signs of inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Symmetrical involvement because autoantibodies don't care about right versus left. It's worse in the morning because the more you move, the more you wash away your inflammatory debris. So you get better in the evening. ESR and CRP are high because it's a freaking systemic inflammation. How about reactive arthritis? It's inflammatory. Therefore, you see the cardinal signs of inflammation, symmetrical involvement, worse in the morning, better in the evening. ESR and CRP are high. The non-inflammatory arthropathies are here. Example, osteo. The inflammatory arthropathies are here. Example, 
ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis, and today's topic, reactive arthritis. In reactive arthritis, you are more likely to have erosions, deformities, effusions, synovitis, constitutional symptoms, as compared to the osteopatient. You will have the cardinal signs of inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Stiffness predominates over pain. Morning stiffness lasts for more than one hour. The pain is worse in the morning, less in the evening. It gets better with movement. You can have extra articular features. So it's not just your joints. It could be your eyes. It could be your skin. It could be other things. ESR, CRP, CBC, all of these could be abnormal because you have systemic inflammation. If I tap the joint and aspire fluid from it, I will see lots and lots of white blood cells. And if it's acute inflammation, it's going to be predominantly neutrophils, of course. Okay, medicosis, now I know that rheumatoid is inflammatory. I also know that reactive arthritis is inflammatory. But what the flip is the difference? Ah, now we're talking about the difference between seropositive and seronegative. Rheumatoid arthritis is seropositive. Mr. Reactive Arthritis is seronegative. What do you mean by seropositive? Your serum is positive for something. It contains something. What's that? Rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP. This is not a video about China. Please refer to my rheumatology playlist to learn more about the rheumatoid factor and the anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide. On the other hand, reactive arthritis is seronegative. What do you mean? Your serum does not have rheumatoid factor and it does not have the anti-CCP antibodies. So, to possess or not to possess the autoantibodies, this is the question, said Shakespeare. Give me an example of seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. You're trying to say that rheumatoid arthritis will have the rheumatoid factor? Who could have thought? How about the seronegative? We have four diseases. We call them the seronegative spondyloarthropathies or spondyloarthritides. Students use the mnemonic PAIR. And I don't care. What's the P? Psoriatic arthritis. What's the A? Ankylosing spondylitis. What's the I? Inflammatory bowel disease related arthritis. For example, I could have Crohn's disease and one of these, particularly inflammatory arthritis. I could have ulcerative colitis and arthritis. And the last one, which is reactive arthritis, which is today's topic. So hello reactive arthritis, tell me about yourself. I am inflammatory arthritis, therefore expect synovitis, deformity, erosion, stiffness, pain that decreases by movement, morning stiffness that lasts for more than one hour, synovitis, fusion, increased ESR and CRP. And I am also seronegative, which means rheumatoid factor is negative, anti-CCP is negative, be very careful of this. ANA should be negative, but one out of nine females in the general normal population have positive ANA. So be very careful. Just because ANA is positive doesn't necessarily exclude the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. Why did you call them spondylo? Because they can affect the spine. Why arthro, joints, and pathology? Reactive arthritis. I'm seronegative spondyloarthritis. I put the itis in arthritis because of inflammation. Rheumatoid factor negative, anti-CCP negative, but I am HLA B27 positive. And this mutation is relatively common in the Middle East, North Africa, Iran, and the area around it. And usually the patient is a young male. So you'll find a 28, 31 year old kind of a boy with arthritis that should not happen at 28. It should happen at like 68. And he's experiencing these symptoms right now. Oh, that's dangerous. You should suspect HLAB27. Reactive arthritis, a good doctor will memorize three things. An excellent doctor will memorize seven. Let's start with the triad. Inflammatory arthritis, urethritis, uveitis. What the flip is the uvea? Uvea is three things in your eye. The choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris. So that's the triad. Inflammatory arthritis, urethritis, uveitis. Now, what's the excellent doctor? Seven things, the same three. Inflammatory arthritis, urethritis, and uveitis. Plus another four. Two rheumatological and two dermatological. Let's go. Two rheumatological. You have dactylitis. What's that? Inflammation of your digits. Could be your fingers 
or your toes. Some weirdos describe them as sausage fingers. Lots of hungry people working in the hospital. And please don't ever ever forget Achilles tendinitis. Oh, the Achilles tendon is the insertion of the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles. Okay, how can you differentiate between Achilles tendinitis and calcaneal apophysitis? Oh, I don't know. Physical exam, doofus. Touch the patient. Okay, where does it hurt? It hurts exactly on the calcaneus. This is calcaneal apophysitis. Or it hurts just above the calcaneus. This is Achilles tendinitis. Go back and study your anatomy and locate the insertion of the Achilles tendon. And please understand that what's inflamed here is not just the point of insertion, it's the entire tendon. Oh, and it was a big freaking tendon. Therefore, you can differentiate between Achilles tendinitis and calcaneal apophysitis just by physical exam. Of course, when in doubt, you go to the radiologist, who will make you doubt even more. Anyways, this Achilles tendinitis increases my risk of tendon rupture, especially if I'm an old person especially if I'm taking prednisone. Oh, do you think a patient with inflammatory arthritis is likely taking corticosteroids? Yeah, this can happen, so be very careful. What are the two dermatological conditions? One is called keratoderma blenorragicum, the other is called circinate belenitis. Itis is inflammation, that's easy, of course, everything is itis. I have arthritis, urethritis, uveitis, achilles tendinitis, dactylitis, okay, belenitis. But what the flip is the belan? Belan is the gland's penis. So it's inflammation of the gland's penis with some kind of a rash. And the rash is circinate. What the flip is that? It is like this. It is tortuous. It is circumvented. It is circumlocuted. It looks like a snake. Circinate belenitis. And you can look a picture on circinate belenitis online. But please don't Google it when your parent is in the house. Because you might have to explain a lot. And one more time. What's the triad? Arthritis, urethritis, uveitis. What's the heptad? Arthritis, urethritis, uveitis, Achilles tendinitis, dactylitis, circinate belenitis, and keratoderma belenorragicum. Who else is gonna teach you like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. Now, Alport versus reactive. Notice, Alport was nephritic syndrome, sensory neural hearing loss, and ocular findings. But reactive arthritis was inflammatory arthritis, urethritis, uveitis. Therefore, we can just say that Alport is can't see, can't pee, can't hear a bee. Reactive arthritis is can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree, or can't bend my knee. Don't forget Achilles tendinitis with reactive arthritis. Oh, by the way, name an antibiotic that can cause Achilles tendinitis. And the answer is the quinolones. And if you have watched my antibiotics videos, you can download them on my website, by the way, you remember what Achilles said. What did Achilles said in my course? Oh, my tendon, I cannot quinolone, like ever. Why? Because these antibiotics can cause Achilles tendinitis and Achilles tendon rupture. Hey, medicosis, what's the difference between quinolones and fluoroquinolones? Fluoroquinolones are a subset of quinolones. In other words, if you are a quinolone antibiotic, you could be a fluoroquinolone or a non-fluoroquinolone. Give me example of fluoroquinolone. Any drug that has the word flux in it, such as ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, etc. Can you give me a non-fluoroquinolone? Quinolone? Sure. Nalidixic acid. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course because I will introduce you not just to Mr. Achilles, but also to Linda, the Catholic nun. And this is a poor baby. This is Sir Alexander Fleming who discovered penicillin. Get my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionatus.com. It has 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, of course, my perfectionatus ultimate notebook, and a beautiful mind map to help you memorize the different antibiotics. I also have a brand new course about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and you can watch the first 60 minutes of this course for free at medicosisperfectionatus.com. 
Go download my courses and get 30% discount by using promo code PANCREAS. You will love my antibiotics course. The emails that I receive from people who watch these videos are amazing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.